In just one day, water levels rose by several meters in towns and villages downstream of Ukraine's destroyed Nova Kohovka Dam. But the worst is yet to come. As the flood water recedes, there's the threat of pollution and disease. And there's even the chance this part of the country will turn into a desert. But what does this disaster mean for the course of the war? And what's the true cost for the people living here? The destruction of the Nova Kohovka Dam unleashed nearly four and a half cubic miles of water from its reservoir into the lower Dnipro River. That's roughly the volume of Utah's Great Salt Lake. The flooding downstream swamped 77 towns and villages and about 230 square miles of land, according to Ukrainian authorities in the region. Hundreds were rescued from rooftops. Now the challenge of resettling thousands of people who've already faced the horrors of occupation and Russian shelling. Water is a challenge and has always been a challenge in Kherson. Electricity has been a challenge. Access to food is a challenge. So now the situation is only getting worse. And the coping strategies or coping mechanisms for this population is already really low. Mm -hmm. Thousands will want to return once the levels drop. But fuel spills and sewage is likely to have contaminated sources of groundwater. And this could lead to an outbreak of waterborne diseases like cholera and typhoid. The picture on the harder hit left bank occupied by Russia is harder to gauge, but satellite images before and after tell a sorry tale. There are reports of people here being left to fend for themselves. Dozens of people are believed to be missing on both sides of the river. There are other dangers in the water. Minefields left by Russian occupiers before they retreated from the right bank of the Dnipro last year have been flooded. The Halo Trust has identified 5,000 mines in the Mykolaiv region just in the past month. The mines might not only move, but they might also fluctuate in terms of the way they're laid, which poses another risk for our staff that, that they need to be prepared for once we're able to clear the mines. The Nova Kahovka Dam has for decades supplied water to the surrounding farmland via a network of canals. While the initial threat to crops was from flooding, the prospect now is drought. The level of the Kohovka Reservoir has dropped below the so-called dead zone the point below which water is no longer flowing into irrigation canals. Ukraine is massively reliant on uh, agriculture. The dam flooding the area is going to have a huge impact on productive farmland in that region um, currently, but then also in the long term, uh, the Ukrainian Ministry of Agriculture has said um, that farmlands that are relying on the reservoir are you know, at risk of drying out and um, turning into desert. That may include Russian-controlled Crimea, whose water comes mainly by way of this canal, close to the punctured dam. There's a longer-term issue, uh, which is not that long-term in terms of water provision to the region. And in the even longer term than that, there is a water provision to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The Zaporizhia nuclear power station needs water to keep its reactors cool even though all six are in shutdown mode. And that water comes from an artificial lake, which is fed by the rapidly shrinking reservoir. So far, the IAEA has said there is no critical threat to the power station because the lake holds enough water for several months. But being on the front line of a war means that losing water or the power for its pumps is always a possibility. The result could be a meltdown. Ukraine is calling the disaster the worst environmental catastrophe since Chernobyl. This area was home to nature reserves, rare animal species, as well as a zoo, now all gone. While countless dead fish lie exposed on the shrinking shores of the reservoir, downstream dead animals, even parts of people's homes, are washing up on the shores of the Black Sea. With Ukraine's long-awaited counteroffensive 
underway. The flooding has made a strike south of Kherson almost impossible. Ukraine is definitely limited in the areas of entry of where, of where it can attack. Um, it's not impossible, but um, it has definitely hindered the Ukrainian counteroffensive. On top of that, I think it's a massive dis distraction uh, for the Ukrainians because the Ukrainians are now more focused on managing a humanitarian disaster and less focused on perhaps um, a military operation. Within weeks, Ukraine's largest lake will revert back to the river it once was. But the damage done to the landscape and the people who lived along its banks downstream will be felt for years.